Hey. Good afternoon. This is Jay. I'm here at a restricted, undisclosed location. Heard you all wanted to hear about an airplane called the A-12 Avenger 2. I'm here to give you the brief on it. So enjoy it while you last, because you won't remember it afterwards. Here it is. The only known specimen of the A-12 Avenger 2. Of course, that's what they say, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Originally designed by McDonnell Douglas and General Dynamics here in Fort Worth and up in St. Louis uh, as part of the Advanced Tactical Aircraft Program for the Navy and the Marine Corps, and even the Air Force wanted some of them. Started in 1983. The program was plagued by all kinds of problems. The airplane got overweight, over time, over money, over everything. And a lot of people here in the Fort Worth area lost their jobs over it. But that isn't to say that this wasn't a success in some respects. In fact, there are those who will tell you that it's still flying today. If you really want to know about this, though, you got to dig a little bit deeper. You got to go back and look into something called Sneaky Pete out of Area 51 back in the 70s. So we're going to walk up and take a little closer look at this. Airplane was designed to replace the A-6 intruder for the Navy and the Marine Corps. And the Air Force decided it would retire, it would retire the F-111s and this would take its place. One of the first stealth airplanes built almost entirely out of composites. Although there was a model that had side-by-side -side seating, the mock-up here was tandem. With the pilot up front and a weapon system officer, a radar intercept officer, or a bombardier navigator in the back seat. The airplane was designed particularly for ground attack purposes. You'll notice the intakes here. That's part of the stealth process. Underneath the leading edge of the wing, and there were curved blades inside. You might be able to see them on this other side a little bit. The curved blades on the inside that would foil radar. The exhaust was some of the same way. It was designed so that the so that radar couldn't see it from down below because it had a serpentine exhaust system that wound around, went from the engines, and then uh, did an S-curve up back out to the exhaust. The engines this thing was designed to use were the, uh, the F-412, but today you know that one is the F-404 that's been used in the AF-18 Super Hornets. So a lot of the pain and misery that came out of this airplane and its design, including the demise of McDonnell Douglas and it being purchased by Boeing, really resulted in a lot of new technology and composites, stealth, and engines. We're going to look a little bit at the leading edge here. The airplane was designed with a folding wing. And as you can see right here, we've got facets on the wings. That was radar. What was kind of interesting are the bays underneath the airplane. You'll notice we've got one, two, three bays. One was for the landing gear. The outboard bay was for sidewinders, for air defense. It was uh, for, for personal defense of the airplane. It was not uh, designed uh, for, for offensive purposes. Offense came out of this other bay. A variety of different uh, different weapons could be used out of this one. You could use the harm missile, which was for anti-radiation, air to ground. AMRAMs, air to ground, air to air. And the a harpoon, uh, from air to ship. You could also carry a variety of normal munitions, Mark 82s, uh, standard general purpose bombs. It could also be used to uh, carry smart weapons. You'll notice how flat the underside is in the facets. The 
This is the only full-scale mock-up that was ever built of the airplane. There may have been one other that traveled somewhat, but this one has been outdoors for a long time, and its condition is not good. It needs to be placed indoors somewhere. Here's where the wing fold was, so this airplane could fold up its wings and be used on board carriers. And this is not a production airplane. They will tell you that the airplane never flew. But I'm going to tell you, if you go, if you Google flying triangles over Amarillo or Wichita, you may think something different. This airplane was in litigation for almost 20 years after, they, after the program stopped in 1991. Finally, in 2014, the litigation was over. At that point, Lockheed Martin and Boeing had to pay the Navy $200 million each for damages. You can just barely see up into the, into the exhaust area where these two big engines would have been. And if you Google and go online, black triangles over Amarillo or over Wichita, as few as four months after the litigation on this airplane was finished people were reporting seeing something very much identical to this airplane flying and there are still reports of it today so you guess do you decide whether this airplane ever flew or not they'll tell you it didn't all the wikipedia's and everything else will tell you it didn't but there are people out there with videos who are going to suggest something else there were other airplanes that were in competition along with this one. They were in competition with this one, but they lost the competition. One of them was the Northrop model, which if you go and look at some of the early Northrop models, you're gonna find that what's flying today is the B-2 is pretty much what Northrop had submitted for its design for this ATA program. You'll also find if you look at that or this airplane, specifically the Northrop design, the B-2 design, and scale it down and put it in, instead of calling it a B-2, call it an X-45, you're going to see pretty much what the Navy is using as a drone for carrier operations today. This one has no landing gear. It has two plastic ones. They will tell you that it never flew and that the gear didn't work. Uh, Mike James saying this is the first FSD program straight out of uh, college. So anybody who was an A6 driver, this was their future. Anybody who was an F11 driver, this was their future. But then it all changed. The F-18 ended up replacing both the F-14 and the A-6. This airplane is a one of a kind. There is nothing else in the world like this. This is the only, the only full-scale replica of this airplane. We may not be able to take too long here. Like I said, this is a restrict, highly restricted area and we're not supposed to be out here. And I know you folks have wanted to see this, and this is kind of a bonus. Did this have the folding wings? Yeah, it absolutely did. We'll go back and take a look at that again. You can see the break in the wing over here on the right. That's where the wing folded. It folded up in a package so that it wasn't much, uh, much different in size with the wings folded than an A6 intruder which is the airplane it was built to do uh, to replace. Service ceiling about 40,000 feet. Subsonic flew at about uh, 560, 580 miles an hour. The Navy originally wanted about 400, and, uh, 400 plus. The Marine Corps wanted, I'm sorry, Navy wanted about 600 plus. The Marine Corps wanted about 230 some. And the Air Force wanted over 400.
Again, as I mentioned, I'm Jay. This is a uh, restricted, undisclosed location. Well, I guess I can tell you because I'm going to erase your memory here shortly anyway. This is at the Fort Worth Aviation Museum. It's in a back lot in a restricted area. And I'm not sure I can stay out here much longer. I hope you've all have enjoyed this. And I hate to do this to you, but in a very short period of time, you're not going to remember any of this. Except that it is Global Giving Day, and please consider supporting the museum. So I'm Jay, and this has been an 812 walk around.